Welcome to Film Sesh. My name is Corey Tulliba of No Ceilings. I am here as always with my co-host Albert Garbage Time Gim for another Film Sesh. Albert, what's going on, man? As we always say, Corey, we are living the dream. Uh, we're in the thick of uh, draft season right now, but we have a very special guest. Really excited to chop it up and uh, to get into his film, but um, excited to be here. Yes, sir. Uh, straight out of the University of North Carolina, uh, we have Harrison Ingram with us today. Harrison, thank you for joining the show, man, to chop it up and break down some film with us. Yes, sir. I mean, I appreciate y'all having me on. You know, I've watched a few of these, these shows and I love breaking down film. I love basketball, so I'm happy to be here. Hell yeah. That's the attitude I like to hear, man. Um, so before we get into your film, you know, for anybody who maybe hasn't seen you play, isn't familiar with your game, how would you uh, break down your game as a player? I would say I'm a do-it-all player. You know, I'm on the wing. I can guard one through four, some fives. I mean, not like Joel Embiid or those big dudes, but like some fives. Um, on the offensive end, I can, you know, kind of do whatever the team needs. I'm pretty good. I feel like I'm underrated in the rebounding category. I shoot the ball well and finish, you know, just do everything the team needs. And, you know, I mean, it doesn't really matter about scoring or anything like that. It's fun to win games. Yeah, man. I, I think this is a perfect opportunity to transition to your game because, you know, we have film from UNC. We got some film from Stanford to kind of see, like, you know, uh, the, the areas of your game where you improved. And, and honestly, just like the different play styles, because I, I think that one of the cool things about seeing you in this context is, like you mentioned, like you did play a little bit differently, right? Like um, where you were very perimeter based in at Stanford and it seems like you got a lot of opportunities to like you said maybe get easier possessions get stuff closer to the rim and not have so much attention on you and I think the physicality in which you played this year too and operating out of the post um you know helped you score uh efficiently in, in that area so take me through you know kind of what you're looking to do it felt like North Carolina like to establish you early a lot too on the block in, in game so what was that process like yeah, so, so coming in, you know, I, we, I didn't really know how I was going to play. And, you know, in high school, I actually did a lot of post-ups because I went to, you know, a little small private school, a bunch mm -hmm. of little kids. So I was always just posting up, getting easy buckets. So I've always had a little bit of a post game. And, you know, Coach Davis, they had watched me in high school a little bit. So they kind of knew about that and wanted to incorporate it into this year. And I was like, sure, I mean, whatever it takes the team to win, I'll do it. Yeah, so when you do have somebody on the block like this, mm -hmm. what are you trying to do, um, you know, to get a, a, a good look off? So going over, I usually like to get to the right, either right post hook or, or fade over my right shoulder. You know, either way, I, those are my go-to moves. So you know, usually now, I mean, guys are bigger because I was playing the four this year. Guys were a little bit bigger, six eight, six nine. So I always had to face them up. I use my strength, use my speed, use my my uh, my balance, and I would always give them, usually give them a bump or, or something, something to just see how they're how they're moving, how strong they are, see how they're feeling, and then you know make a move from there. Let's get a little UNC Duke rivalry going early here. I think what's valuable, because, you know, you might not see a lot of post play, you know, as or as much post play as you did in, you know, 20 years ago in the NBA. Right. But you have to be able to punish uh, punish mismatches, right? Like that's kind of what you're looking to do in NBA basketball is identify the mismatch and, and punish it. So, I, you know, the fact that you have this kind of post game and you can use it against smaller players. Take me through this possession here on Jared McCain, you know, an, another potential draft prospect. Um, who's strong, but, you know, is uh, a little bit shorter than you are. Right. You know, go, going into this game, we knew they switched one through four. And I remember in the first game I was watching film, I didn't have as many post-ups in the first game against them when it was at our place, but I remember they were sitting on my on my post hook, my right my right uh, little jump hook. So I knew that their coach kept saying, look for his jump hook, look for his jump hook. So I knew when I get to um, one of the guards on me, I was like, oh, I knew I, knew I was going to do this move. I mean, I knew I was like, go right into it, kind of fake to the baseline a little bit and then get to a little, little shot right over him. I feel like it's good yeah. for the rhythm too to you know to get a shot going like that. I mean, a little easy turnaround jumper to start the game. I feel like that's really good for your rhythm. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you know, you got him. You wait for everybody to clear out. You're patient. Give him a couple of bumps. You know, he's trying. He's doing his best. But right. too little. You gave him the too little. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> there, I love it. Oh. I wanted to ask Harrison, so like something you talked about earlier, right? Coming into a new situation, coming over to UNC, uh, you played a different role in Stanford, right? And then, you know, we talked about it, right? When you, you go up against a team like Duke and you know they're going to be switching everything, right? Then obviously you're going to have some opportunities to take advantage of all that. 
heading into the season, right, with Coach Davis and the rest, rest of the coaching staff, what was kind of like the main thing or the main message they had for you in terms of how they wanted you to attack on the offensive end? Right. I mean, that was a big change. I mean, coming from Stanford to UNC. I mean, at Stanford, I was passing the ball. But here, when I got here, I mean, from the start, from the first the first day, it was Coach Sully and Coach Davis. They were telling me that you're, my job here is to, to make the score go up. Like, don't pass the ball if you're open. Shoot it. If you take a guy one-on-one, go. I mean, if you see something, go. Like, just play free. And, you know, we need you to be one of our scorers this year. And I feel like, you know, the first month, it was different for me. Um, I, it was definitely an adjustment. You know, every every catch and shoot three, they wanted me to shoot it, you know, whether someone's close now or not. And after like a month or so, I got used to it. You know, I kind of changed the way I thought about the game. I had a, a really, really good point guard with me, Elliot. So he would find me a lot in transition and for layups. And I, if I run the floor, I know I'm, I mean, I'm going to get the ball. I know if I cut or move off the ball hard, I was going to get it. So, you know. After about a month or so, I feel like I kind of adjusted to the play style. It's fun to play like that, right? Right, 100%. 100%, 100%. But you have a little bit of that too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I wanted to start with the post-up stuff because I feel like, you know, a lot of your passing really showed up, like, coming out of post-ups because you did draw so much attention there. And, you know, you are 6'7", and you, you've shown throughout your career this, this really plus vision. So um you know and we're going to break down your passing a little bit later but i did want to transition just from the post up stuff because i think in the modern nba if you are going to play in the post it can't just be to be a scorer you know you have to be able to leverage that and make guys better so take me through what exactly you are reading um in this scenario here cuz you know it's a slick hit to the weak side of the floor right um against alabama uh, we didn't know how they were going to play us at first but we saw in the first 2 minutes that they had their five well grant nelson was playing their five um, on Elliott, and they were sitting him in the paint. So I knew that if I get to – I, I knew Aaron Schrader was guarding me. I knew if I get to a post-up, Elliott's going to be on the, on the opposite side. I knew Grant Nelson was going to come up over. And I knew you know, whenever Elliott was, I was going to find him. It just happened to be a skip pass, whether I'd been to the corner. I mean, either or. Um, I knew it was going to be Elliott wide open across court probably. Yeah, and, you know, you lob it right right up so, you know, it's over his, his outstretch uh, stretch reach. And, uh, I mean, right on target, that's, you know, an absolutely great, great pass there uh, yes. to your teammate. Now, you, you mentioned your shooting. And um, I want to talk about, you know, going back to Stanford, you know, you're usually in like the low 30%, or, you know, somewhere in that area. And you made a, a pretty good jump on the most volume of your career. Mm -hmm. So what do you think was like the biggest difference this year? I know you mentioned, you know, you got, you had more attention at Stanford. Right. Um, but was there anything that you also did kind of mechanically to kind of change up uh, what you were doing in these shots? A hundred percent. I mean, I worked, I worked really hard in the offseason on my shot, you know, changing some mechanics. I worked with a guy named uh, Brandon Payne, who also trains uh, staff. And, you know, we worked on my shot. It was like two a day every single week. He come, he lives in Charlotte. He come down to UNC and worked me out before and after practice. And I, I really worked on more, less the upper mechanics of my shot, more the lower mechanics, my, my, my feet. I have my feet ready every time, stepping into it. But another, another thing that I feel like is a way, the reason I shot higher is at Stanford, I mean, if you, if you look at the numbers, that's one of the reasons when they recruited me is that I had always shot 40% on catch and shoot threes. It was just the off the dribble threes or the, the, the late grenades or the step backs mm -hmm. where my percentage would go lower. So this year, you know, I focus more on just every time I have a catch and shoot shot, it's either shot, you know, just thinking shot, drive, or, you know, pass. And we play with the point five mentality, and I feel like it really helped my game. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, you've showed that. And like, I think that's for young players coming into the league, right? Like you have to be able to hit like the spot up shots, or I think, you know, because of your versatility, um, you know, you can also be used as like a screener and you can, you know, run some pick and roll. And I think, I think that'll help you even, you know, your playmaking, you know, short roll pass, stuff like that. But um, yeah, so kind of, you know, take me through what you're trying to do in these situations on, you know, this side of the floor, um, to kind of get these shots off at the speed in which you need to, um, you know, in, in these kind of situations here. One thing, another thing I learned, you know, playing off the ball more here is how important I mean, screening is or, or ghost screening or face screening and how much that can be just as important, just as effective as a crossover dribble or a step back shot. You know, for me this year, I, I had a lot of low guards, so I was screening for them, screening off the ball. We knew that. Um, Louisville uh, was switching, and I knew that if I didn't touch the guy, he would forget, and the guy wouldn't. They, they weren't talking on defense, so I knew if I didn't touch <laughs> him, I could just go side of the screen and get a little, get a little three. Also, kind of coach credit to Coach Davis; he he's the one who told me about that. But you know, for me, I watched a lot of Draymond Green film, especially when you talk about the post. 
you know, a lot of times the Warriors had him in the post and wasn't even to score. You know, they were they had Steph and, and Clay running off screens. You know, I had a really good shooter in RJ, and I like I was able to, to learn how to play off of him and get open shots out of that. Yeah, I really like the footwork too. You know, I think it's hard when you're moving, you know, like you're kind of like backpedaling or moving to the side. Right. And I, I think your footwork, like you said, you know, kind of working on that, it, it shows in, in plays like this. Um, and those corner shots, like at the next level, right? Like that's kind of the shot that, especially as a young player, you need to have down and, and have coming in. And, you know, when you when you do shoot it at that level now, now it opens up different parts of your game, right? Right. So take me take me through this possession against Alabama. Um, we, this is a play we ran uh, all the time, and it, it was never for me. It was always for a mom to get a post up, and I knew if I set a good screen, they weren't switching really off the ball. I knew if I set a good screen, who's got the help, and I was gonna get my shot open. And the one thing I really noticed going into the uh, second half of the season is teams were instead of closing out short, they started running me off the line. So I knew if I just mm-hmm. give them a pump fake, I get to the rim or make a play for myself or whatever it was. It happened to be you know a left hand layup, but you know I just knew. Setting good screens, but that goes like I didn't even need to really mm-hmm. take a lot of dribbles. Set a good screen, pump fake, two dribbles, layup. I saw you play in the Pac-12 tournament your freshman season. I was there, got to see you play live, got to scout you there. And look, to your credit, man, I feel like your physique has improved so much. And I really wanted to give you kind of like your flowers and like that encouragement to let you know. And like, hey, I saw you, uh, I think it was, I don't know if it was at the Blazers or where it was, yeah, but you had like Blazers. a little workout right? And you had the shirt off. And I was like, dude, like, that is incredible, right? And so if you could speak a little bit to your body transformation and how you've worked on that as well. You know, for me, it was, just, it was a total thing, you know, going into my freshman year, you know, it was five star, whatever. Um, everybody expected to be one done, you know, go through the process and then going back to school, trying to improve your stock. And then you have a, a down year, you know, what I mean, it's, it's tough. It's a tough thing to go through. And I feel like I had to change my diet, change everything and start eating right, you know, going to sleep one time, getting up and working out. It was you know, it was more to sleep, you know, when you go to sleep a little bit earlier, it's a little bit easier not to eat or order a pizza at night or, you know what I mean, do little stuff like that. So, you know, for me, it was just changing my view of the game. Um, I feel like I'm more of a scorer. We play a lot of ones at UNC. We play ones after, like, every practice, me and two of my, my, good, my good teammates on the team, good friends on the team. And you know, I feel like everything like that is the work. I mean, I, I, I trust the work and I pay my hat on. You know, it's, it was really impressive. Um how your quickness is kind of even improved in that area. And I, I, I love, you know, we just watched you being run off the line, right. And attacking, but you also got like a little, got a little shake. You got a little self creation in your game. You said that you play ones, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, I, I want to know about this play taking Kyle Filipowski off the bounce, but what was it like coming, you know, from Stanford and then inserting yourself into this rivalry and having to go into Duke and play at that arena as, you know, the away team with a North Carolina jersey on? Man, I mean, it's surreal. I still don't believe, you know, I was, I was in that game, both of them, even at our place. But, you know, for me, I'm, I've never really been a nerd. I don't really get nervous before games. I've never, it's never been that, that sort of thing for me. Um, so for me, it was just, you know, I'm going to go out there. You know, I like playing against, I don't duck any competition. I like playing against the best guys and seeing how their game goes against my game. So I was going there. I was like, let's have fun and let's, let's try to win. I mean, I think that's kind of the mentality that you have to have, right? Like in a big game like that, like if you start overthinking it, that's that's when you can trip yourself up. But I, I love this possession here against Kyle Filipowski, who I think is actually kind of like an underrated perimeter defender. Um, so yeah, kind of kind of bring me through this. What are you trying to do with him um, on on this you know attempt at the the basket? Um, you know, for for us, first first play, um, they were they knew they were weaking RJ, and they weren't. They weren't helping off him. They didn't want him to get that three up. So I knew mm-hmm. I was going to catch it. I knew he was going to close out hard because I was shooting three ball pretty well this year. And I was like, you know, I hear Coach Davis on the sideline. I hear him say, go to work. So I just got, I just got in my bag. You know, I hit him with a little tween. He was on the hip a little bit, a uh, spin move, and then try to get, get to the body. He had three fouls, try to get him his fourth foul, get to the body. Ref calls it and one. And, you know, we're up, what, seven. I think I made the free throw. We're up 10 with uh, six minutes left to go. And their best player is a four foul. So, you know, it was a, it was a win for me, win for our team. Was, yeah, was that a, sorry, Corey? Really quickly, was that the scout on Filipowski before the game that you know if you have that opportunity to go right at him, or was it just a situational thing? Uh, and I was a scout. You know, we knew that they didn't have a lot of bigs. One of their bigs was hurt, and they had him and Ryan Young. And you know, if you get one of them out, we were we were dominant in the post. Me and Armando, especially rebounding the ball. So you know, we knew Filipowski when you get into his body, he tends to to hack. Um, mm-hmm. But 
you know, we ran to Scotland. It worked. Like you're good at going slow to fast and, and changing speeds. How much, you know, is, is that a part of your game, whether you are scoring or you're making a play, like just when you're playing with the ball in your hands? 100%. I mean, I, watching a lot of NBA basketball, you watch Luca, you watch some of the, she watched Shea. I mean, that's Shea, he's 6'5", mm-hmm. long, athletic, but a lot of the finishes he does is straight, straight off skill, uh, slow, um, pace, um, finishing is good touching. You know, for me, it's not all about I'm dunking the ball. I guess I can, I can dunk the ball, but you know, we get to the highest level. There's seven foot three, seven foot four freaks in there. I mean, you got to figure out ways to score that doesn't involve always trying to dunk over them. And the spin move, you know, pump fake, maybe slowing down, having a little, a little jump shot. I mean, a little floater. I mean, I feel like the, the skilled players always win. So you mentioned uh, SGA. You mentioned Luca. Are there any other guys that you watch in the NBA that you're like, oh, I think I can play like him, or like I, I take stuff from this guy's game and try to put it into my game? hundred percent. I mean, I, I like to take stuff from, you know, a little bit of everybody. I mean, everybody's in the NBA for a reason. So I like to learn from everybody, whether that's Draymond Green and his in the post, whenever he's doing the split mm-hmm. cuts with uh, Curry and Thompson. Yeah. That's a newbie. You know, the way that he went from uh, Toronto and then his adaptability. I mean, that's the one thing I like to say for myself. He went from Toronto and Knicks and fit in seamlessly with the culture, fit in seamlessly with the team, fit in seamlessly with his play style, knocking down threes, you know, figuring out ways to, you know, get in his bag a little bit like that. And Really on the defensive end, you know, locking down. I feel like I take pride on defensive end, and a lot of people don't, you know, especially nowadays. You know, people are always about the offense, about the score, but you know, for me, I like guarding people. I like shutting people down. You know, speaking of your, you know, the adaptability and like bringing up a guy like OG Ananobi, um, you know, I think one of the ways that he's able to fit in is because he's not just a guy who either has to play with the ball in his hands or a guy who has to sit in the corner. Like he has that feel and he can read the game, and I he's able to create offense for himself when he doesn't have the ball in your hands. And, you know, I think that you have, you likewise have like good feel moving off the ball um, and freeing yourself up and getting easy buckets. And when you're a young player, especially that's super important because you might be playing with SGA or you might be playing with Luca, right? So like you have to learn uh, as a young player, how to create opportunities for yourself um, when you don't have the rock. So when you are kind of moving off the ball and trying to find gaps, what are the things that you're kind of reading? What is it about? Is it timing? What, how, t- take me through like what you're looking at um, as you're cutting off the ball. No, I, I usually I go, I go into even deeper detail than that. You know, it's play styles, how the team's guarding. I mean, what the strength of my teammates are, what the strength of everything was. And, you know, on this play, I knew Elliot was fast. This is design play we have where he rejects the screen. Um, we have Cormac there. I tell them to move up. I know they're not leaving Cormac. They have RJ in the corner. They're not going to leave RJ. So that would probably be my man would be the low man. So when Elliot, I knew Elliot was fast and he get by his man. Right when he gets by his man, my man's going to help. It's a cut and an easy dunk. And, you know, something I kind of saw before the play had happened. And, you know, it, 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 I was right. And I sometimes, you know, things you do in the game. You know, Elliot's really good at it. A lot of good mm-hmm. IQ players, you know, right. in the NBA. And I feel like that's what separates some players is IQ, just knowing how to play and knowing where to be. But – back to what makes you an intriguing prospect is like, you know, we just went through some of the ways that you can score. Um, your playmaking, I think is, is something that's really impressive. Um, and, you know, we saw you pass out of the post. This is a really simple action, but not every, you know, four can be the guy who's receiving, um, you know, playing out of like these little like quick pitch actions and go in and make a sm- slick little pocket pass like this. So take me through, um, you know, kind of, what you're doing on this possession and, and what you're looking to do and what you're reading from the defense. Oh yeah. So in this possession, I was actually at the three. Uh, they played me at the, the three and the four with me and Jalen Withers would kind of switch off at the four and, and they played me at the three whenever he was in. And yeah, you know, this possession is one of our plays. It was a, it's usually a high spot, high split action, you know, either give it to me or RJ, whichever guy looks more open and they're denying RJ on the top side. So I get the screen and you know when my guy rolls, Jay Wash, he's, I know he's, he's not really tight, good at the, the tight passes. He's, more in space, you give it to him, he'll finish, he'll shoot a little post hook, he'll shoot a little a pop-up three. So, you know, I get around, my defender's trailing a little bit. I know his guys to help. Simple, you know, just simple practice pocket pass and let him make the play. Yeah, I mean, I, I think fitting a pass like that in is really slick. You draw the foul. And this is something that, you know, going back to Stanford, when you were playing more on the perimeter in, in more like pick and roll scenarios, you've kind of always been able to do here, um, again, showing – you know, uh, this time, you know, more stationary, you're not coming out of like a fluid action, but I like how tight you come off these screens too. So, you know, when you are using screens, what are, how are you trying to kind of play off of your screener? 
you know, for me, it's more use my body. Um, it's not all about the, the first step. You know, I try to get them, make sure you use the screen, make sure make them use the screen. I mean, kind of just the basic fundamentals of, of screen, you know, bring my guy into the screen, come off, you know, hip to hip to shoulder, uh, hip to my shoulder to their hip of my big man and, you know, create the advantage, you know, whether that's for myself, whether that's for him. I feel like, you know, take your time, use my patience, use my body and the right play will open up eventually. Yeah, it's simple. You know, it's, it's so simple, but it's so effective when, when you do it um, and you execute it properly. Um, and again here, I think like you really have a lot of craft and, you know, when you get the opportunity to show, I, again, I like your pace and you, you're really good at doing that little, like putting your defender in jail, right? Like using that physicality. So, you know, do you, is like, when you watch a guy like Luca, are these, you know, kind of the things that you're taking from him because you're also like some six, seven and is somebody who's running these kind of ball screen actions. 100%. I mean, it's something I, I take from him and something I work on every day is, you know, keeping guys on your hip. You know, I'm a bigger, stronger body. Um, I feel like when I get somebody on my hip, you know, I have the advantage and someone, you're not really getting around my, I have a wide shoulders, you know, you're not really getting around my body, you know, I use my body. And once you got have somebody on your hip, you know, it's two on one, you know, right here. I get what has Tyler Burton on my hip. So it's just me and Armando versus the guy, you know, dump it off to him, let him make the play, miss the layup. But, you know, that's a, we'll take a, a layup from Armando every day. Yeah. I yep. think that two on one is the big point, right? Mm -hmm. Like making that big you know, play cat and mouse, right? Like, and, and I think it's a really slick drop off. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah. Harris, really quickly, I just want to say, like, I think the the play that we're highlighting here really nice pass right and something that you're really comfortable doing do you feel like there's an area of this action right you as a ball handler where you feel like you want to continue to improve something you want to continue to work on uh for me it, not necessarily this action but more kind of just on on the iso ball you know having the having that crossover i mean yeah you can screen off the ball but you know having that is nice too so if you know for me it's having that crossover using that step maybe adding a, a go-to move and I, I like the hesitation but adding one more go-to move and you know, always improving at something, you know, I'm never a perfect player. I'm always right. keep improving my shooting. But, you know, for me, one big thing I'm focused on right now is just handles and breaking your defender down on the perimeter. And then this one last play on offense before we get into your defense. Okay. Going back to Stanford, again, because I think, you know, you, you had the opportunity to run more uh, ball screens because, you know, you had Elliott and you had RJ, right, playing with the ball in hand a lot at UNC. The vision to kind of come off and hit the weak side here. Um this is kind of like the pass that unlocks everything at the next level, right? Uh, so so take me through how you're kind of dissecting the defense here um, on the, on this possession. You know, you know, for me, I think that's one thing that's that still is another thing that's underrated is my passing. You know, I I've always been a I've always been a good passer. You know, I'm very comfortable with all my hands, like y'all were talking about. But for me, you know, for this one, they were pulled in. I feel like that's another mm -hmm. thing. You take your time. You know, the, the right player open up. You got the advantage. You know, got the two on one right there. Um, if he doesn't help over the passes to Maxime, um, what's that? To Bellis, he helps over. It's yeah. an easy pass to Brandon Angel in the corner. He's a he was a forty five percent open three point shooter. We'll take that three for a team. You know, for me, it's it's, it's about I kind of see the game and I play a lot of two K. I see the game kind of like a video game a lot. You know, in two K, I run a bunch of ball screens. I'm kind of a, a little bit of a try hard, but you know, in two K, you always see you know the guy pulls over. You make the make the pass to the corner. You know, when I play basketball, the game is slowed down. When I, when I use my pace, get the guy in my body, I'm gonna make the right play. It, this play specifically, uh, the the thing that is so impressive really is your pace, and I think because you're strong and you're you're big, you feel confident. But right here, right, like as you start getting into this little like elbow area, mm -hmm. this little extra dr extra dribble here to freeze everybody, including the low man. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's what really unlocked it, and then you get, take one more step to get deep. I, the execution on that is like really advanced um you know really advanced stuff from a, a playmaker and I, again i think offensively this is what really makes you so intriguing on that dribble um that's one thing you know i think it makes the the one thing i've really worked on uh is keep when you got the guy on your hip taking a few extra dribbles letting the big let the big come into the play like let the play develop you know just because it's not the, the answer is not there right away doesn't mean it might not open up in a second or two seconds you know i keep the guy on my hip you know be either could be a floater for me that big helps up um, dump it off to my big, and if my big is not, if the big helps up, my big is not open. That means the other guy pulled over, uh, opposite corner. And I feel like those are the three reads that you got to build make consistently and make it easy. Now I want to switch sides and, and start talking about your defense now because you know I think you've always had defensive tools. Obviously, like your size, your length, all of that, and and your mobility has, has always been apparent. But it seems like this year 
it really kind of culminated and was like you were super super impactful as a defender and you took a leap um on that side of the ball that i thought was really really impressive so you know when you came here and you're playing off and with these kind of veterans and you know is having those guys around having you know the the history of north carolina the coaching staff how much of that kind of helped you know um your game as much as the work did that you did by yourself I mean, it definitely helped knowing that you're going into the situation. And for me, it was more knowing that it wasn't like it was crazy to me. It was more just I know how big UNC is. I know I'll be playing against the best competition, you know, on ESPN, ABC, I mean, whatever you're calling it every night. Now, I knew that was a big opportunity for myself to show my game. I wanted to be ready. So, you know, I got in the best shape of my life. Um, the first practice here, I almost like died. I remember that. I remember that day like it was no other. I almost died. We were running up and down. I was like, I'm not, I'm not ready, you know. And one of our managers, um, shout out JR, uh, he's a, Cross country runner, so you know, for about two months, every week, once or twice a week, we go on the cross country on the track, and you know, I just start running. I mean, I think it helped me a lot. I got to the point where I mean, no practices, I didn't miss any practices. I never asked for a sub. I never came out. And same thing for the games. You know, he never really took me out unless he wanted to, you know, give me a break. But I never really felt like I needed a break, and I feel like that allowed my game to open up a lot. And watching your film, I feel like the power and the aggression and like kind of the ferocity that you played with, but just overall the strength that you played with, I think really helped you out. Because like you said, this season, you were going up against four, sometimes even fives, right? You had to guard up a little bit. I, I feel like the strength that you had, especially in your lower half, helped you out a lot, especially against bigger dudes. If you could speak to that aspect of your game, like the strength that you have and how that helped you defensively. You know, let leverage wins in the NBA, I mean. It's not all about how strong you are up top. You know, the guys, the guys could be strong, but you see guys like Drew Holiday and even mm -hmm. Patrick Beverly guard people in the post who you didn't think they'd be able to guard. And you now I watch film, you know, they use their legs, they use their they lean on them, you know, kind of bump them. And I got better at moving my feet, kind of guessing where their finger's going to go. And I'm, I'm a pretty strong, solid dude. So, you know, I feel like if I get there first or if I at least get there at the same time as them, I can absorb the bump and, you know, make them go where I want them to go instead of having to react to them. This is a great example of exactly that right like ryan dunn you know maybe not known for being the best offensive prospect around right but he's strong as hell and you know he's, he's a fluid guy so i i think here like this is what you're talking about right like using your chest using their body and if you we freeze frame it i think we see how like your lower body how low you're getting and kind of like you know the saying low man wins here like you're you're underneath him, right? So is that what you're trying to do in the post? You're trying to just get it under guys, mm -hmm. just make them work. Hundred percent, and especially you know athletic guys. Um, you're not always gonna be able to block everybody's shot. Like if I if I post somebody up, they're probably not gonna block my shot. But you know, just getting under them really bothers people. I mean, when you you don't think you can land, you have to fade away. You know, when you don't practice a fade away, it really can impact your shot. And this was also another another scouting thing. Um, I mean, I knew I was I was sending um. No middle, we played no middle, and I knew he left mm -hmm. to go left. So you know, I was playing the left hand drive, read it pretty right, and you get into the little turnaround, you know, just contest and you live with it. But then, you know, going now to the perimeter, you know, you can move. And here you are on an island, Jameer Watkins, big time scorer this year for Florida State. So when now when you're guarding wings out on the perimeter, what are you trying to do um, against somebody like Jameer Watkins? You know, so same thing. I mean, I, in reality, I'm I'm same position as him. So you no, know, for me, it's just, you know, this is another good player. And I take my matchups personally, and, you know, it's one on one, mano y mano, let's, let's get a stop. And that, that's the body, another thing. That's the body thing um, that you were talking about, giving, giving them the bump. You know, most people, especially if you look at every workout, look at every trainer when they're guarding their guys, you know, they're, they're taught to give the bump first. But, you know, I, I feel like I've, I found the, the perfect medium of not pushing somebody to get the foul, but, you know, giving him the bump first so he doesn't, he's off balance because like, the fading away layup is a lot harder than going to the rim. Yeah, right. You want your momentum to be dictating how the possession goes. Yeah, I think that that's big time. Now at the next level, you know, we talk about all these guys, versatility, switchability. Um, right here, you're going to get the, a possession on Rob Dillingham, maybe the shiftiest guy, you know, even in this draft. Do you remember this possession? Yeah, he got me. He got me. He got me. He, yeah. So take me through this. What are you trying to, to do here? And, and you know, how, what kind of happened here on this possession? You know, he got, he got my hips opened up and he made a nice little move. But, you know, for me, again, you know, when I, when I get on the island one-on-one, I, I think it's fun. You know, I like to see, you know, I'd be like, this guy's shifty. Let's see. Let's see if I can guard him. 
So I sat down and he got my hips open up right there with a the little little drop hezzy tween. And then you know, I mean, he made a good move. I mean, he's a good player. And uh, yeah, it was a good matchup. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, the fact that you can kind of recover, you can move, um, maybe just, I, I get you're trying, probably trying not to foul there, right? Like late in the second half, tight game. I didn't game. realize where we were. I remember the spot. I don't realize, I didn't realize we were, I thought we were further under the basket. So when he went out, mm. I was like, ain't no way he's about to make that. So I thought I, I should have jumped for the block, but I just got you. I was, I mean, got was you. But then a couple minutes later in the game, Similar situation, DJ Wagner, another downhill guard. Take me through this one. See, this one, you know, he's not as as, as fast and like the burst as, as Rob. So this guy, I'm, you know, I'm going to use my length. I'm going to try to get, I usually, against guards like that, I try to get, uh, you know, a rip steal. So I reached a little bit right there, but now I recover. I know I could beat him to the spot. And you know, I feel like I'm pretty good at, especially when I'm guarding the guy on the ball, is blocking the shot at the rim and not letting them finish. And, you know, Coach Davis trusted me a lot on the island. You know, he didn't call a double. He didn't anything. And, and I trust myself on the island one on one and just you know get a stop. I, I, I did want to you, you mentioned right like the rib steal thing. Wanted to give you some credit there. Like this season, you averaged like 1.4 steals per game, almost one and a half steals per game. Pretty good number, right? Uh, is that something that like you were definitely focusing on? And not that you'd focus on getting more steals, but like the defensive playmaking aspect of it, was that something you were definitely looking at heading into the season? I, I not, not even looking at it. I feel like you know, I got in really good shape and it got to the point where. And I was like, you know, I'm going to dominate every aspect of the game, whether that's on the ball, getting steals, whether that's pressing up some guys full court, whether that's defending in the post, you know, everything I wanted to you know, do the best I can. And I feel like, you know, I have long arms. I'm, I'm sneakily a lot quicker than people think. So yeah. like a lot of the guards, when I try to go one on one, I feel like I can beat them to the spot and take the ball. Yeah. And, I, you know, I think like on this possession, you do so many good things even before you, you get the block. Um, like you are low, you're flipping your hips. And then the active hands, like right there. Mm -hmm. You know, just to let them feel it, not even like going for the steal necessarily, but just kind of let them know, like, don't leave it in front of me, right. um, you know, and then the retreat, you know, we saw it with the, the possession with Jameer, but this one too, where like, you're kind of in retreat, but you're still able to contest mm -hmm. um, and finish that way, which I think is, is big time. Um, and then I think this position just kind of shows like positionally how versatile you are. Like you start now guarding the big, right. And you know, and you guys are in a switch. And now you're on a guard. Um, so how many positions do you think that you're going to be able to guard at the next level? I, th I think I'll be able to guard one through four, um, for sure. I mean, obviously, I'm not saying I'm going to lock up everybody because you know, these, mm -hmm. dudes, these dudes are tough. Like Kyrie's, Kyrie would be a tough matchup. But, you know, I feel like I feel confident one through four that I can sit down and get a stop, whether that's on the perimeter you know, even or even in the post. You know, some fives, uh, I think I'll be able to switch on the fives. But for a whole game, I think I guarded one or four for a whole game. The last possession I want to show which I think is important because we see it like you see a guy like Derek White making, you know, winning plays like this, mm -hmm. right? Like, like hustling, getting back, not giving up anything easy. So take me through this possession. Um, you remember this one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was a fun game. You know, I, I know him a little bit. He's the same grade as me. And we were, we were talking. It was, it was a good game. And it was close. We were talking a lot. And, you know, for me, I'm, I'm a big guy in transition. You know, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, if it's two-on-one, -on I mean, you dunk on me, you dunk on me. I'm going to jump. So, you know, I went for this one. I didn't want him to dump it off to the big guy. I wanted the little guy mm -hmm. to take it. So I kind of played played both, waited for the last second. And then when I saw him about to jump, I timed it up and just went and got it. That's kind of the last clip that I wanted to go through. But, um, you know, what do you think? You know, we talked about kind of your passing. We talked about different improvement areas. Um, what do you think is like the, the day one skills that you can bring to an NBA team? I think the first thing I'm going to bring, I, I feel like very confident in my kind of shoot um, open threes in the corners, you know, knocking it down. Because, you know, whatever place I go to, they're going to have their stars. Just playing off of them, be able to knock it down, you know, cut, move, play off the ball. Another thing, a defense, defensive intensity and energy and all things. I mean, diving on the floor. You know, I mean, whatever it is, diving on the floor, clapping. I mean, yelling, screaming, rebounding. I feel like I'm going to bring rebounding. And kind of shoot threes of energy for sure from the start. Um, wanted to kind of get into your head a little bit and find out, like, and this is something I've been asking all the guys that we do film breakdowns with is what is your why, right? Like, what has been pushing you along the way? As we talked about, <clears throat> you've had a tough journey, you've had your ups and downs, you've gone through a lot of different things. What's been that driving force 
that's kept you going, that's motivated you to keep getting better, working on your body, working on your game, working on the professionalism? What is that why that keeps you going and has pushed you to this point in your journey? I mean, the, the easy statement for me is I'm trying to get to the league. I mean, since from since I was born, I mean, that's been my dream. You know, I love college basketball. I love UNC. That was my dream too, to play on the biggest level. But for the NBA has always been, you know, hearing your name get called, playing on those games, playing against the best players in the world, playing against all the players you play in the 2K. I was watching when I was young, you know, that was my dream. And I've always wanted to do whatever it takes to get there. There's nothing else I want to do but play basketball. And I love it. I and mean, that's what drives me. I love the game. I love to play basketball. I mean, I'm a gym rat. I'm always in the gym, watching film, watching games, playing 2K, I mean, whatever it is. I just, I just love basketball. So for me, it's, it's a no-brainer to do whatever it takes. Is there anybody in the league right now that you're like, I can't wait to be on an island with that person? Not like, oh, I need to, you know, go one-on-one -on -one with this person, but just like I've been watching, you know, my whole life. Um, and I, you know, I want to know what it's like to to guard. You know, the easy answer is, is LeBron. Everyone, you know, yeah. that's everyone's favorite player growing up. That was, I mean, he's the GOAT to me. It was, it's the easy answer is LeBron. But for me, you know, uh, uh, out of the pocket answer that most people wouldn't think, I I, I can't wait to guard Jalen Brunson. You know, I, I mm. he's, tough. he's tough. Especially this, probably, he's averaging like 40. He's like, what, 5'11", 6 foot, just post-work, mid-post-work. I, I want to, I only want to be on the island of perimeter. I want to guard him in the post and to see how, like, see how <laughs> tough it is. I just want to see how, you know what I mean? I just want to see how tough it is to guard him in the post. Craft, <laughs> work, pump fake, all that. All that, man. One question. Are you allowed to say LeBron's a goat on a North Carolina campus? I'm, I'm saying it and I'm saying it proud. <laughs> <laughs> I think LeBron, hold on, hold on. LeBron is the best player of all time. I think Michael Jordan is like the, the greatest. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. There's definitely a distinction. Right. For sure. Cool. For Great sure. Answer. Great answer. Well, Harrison, I appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule to come talk to us, chop it up, break down film, let us pick your brain, um, and kind of just, you know, let everybody know who you are, not only as a player, but as a person and, and you know, your personality and let that shine through too. So um, definitely good luck on, on the rest of the this process and, and this journey where we're looking forward to seeing it. And we appreciate you chopping it up, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me on. You know, it's fun to watch some film. Uh, kick it with you guys, you know, pick y'all's brains too. <laughs>